In this video, I want to talk about how soul ties are created. Let's have this conversation. Welcome back to our channel. My name is Dorian and this is Not Easy to Broken. First, I want to take the time to say thank you to all of you guys that subscribe to our channel. I just realized that we, I said we because I didn't do it. You guys did. We hit 2,000 subscribers. A matter of fact, I think it's a little bit over 2,100. I don't know. I decided in February that I was going to give a little bit more effort to this channel. And so at least once a week, I try to upload a video and I've seen where it's impacting lives. People are, are liking the video. And so I want to thank those of you that subscribe. And if you're not a subscriber and you like the content that we share, then please, by all means, consider subscribing to the channel. Let's get right into this video. To understand how soul ties is created, you must first understand who you are. You must understand how God created you. See, you are a three-part human. You are a spirit, a body, and a soul. I'm going to say it again. You are a spirit, you are a body, and a soul. The soul is the mediator between the spirit and the body. The soul is one of the most dangerous part of who you are. I'm going to say it again. Your soul is one of the most dangerous part of your life. In Matthew chapter 16, it tells us that what good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in return for their soul? Guys, your spirit is not where the problem is. When God created man, he breathed into the body and man became a living soul. God breathed a part of himself into us and we live. We are not a physical being. We are a spiritual being. Man is a spirit with a body. Therefore, only spirits with physical bodies can legally function in the earth. Any spirit without a body is illegal here on earth. And with that being said, that's why you have more power than the devil. You have more authority in the earth than the enemy, than principalities and all these wickedness. You, my friend, we have more power. We have dominion over the earth. The Bible said that God made us a little bit lower than the angels and give us authority, give us rulership, give us dominion over everything that was created. You find that in the book of Psalms chapter 8. In order for our spirits to function on earth, they need a body. That's why the devil oppresses the believers of God. I want you to hear me. The devil cannot possess believers. When we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, the devil cannot possess us. He can only oppress the believer. But those that are not believers, those that doesn't believe in Christ Jesus, those that are not saved and surrender their lives to the Lord, they can be possessed by the enemy. Hold on a minute. How did I get here? Wow, this, this is just a side note, guys. But anyway, let's get back into it. Well, the Greek word for breath is pneuma. It is from this word we get pneumatology. Pneumatology means the study of the Spirit of God. So you are a spirit. The devil is not after your spirit because that belongs to God. The devil is not after your body. He's not after this lump of clay. This is only a clay. This is dirt. This is dirt. This is dirt, guys. This is dirt. Listen, this here is not who you are. Your body belongs to the ground, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. This is not what the devil is after. You know what the devil is after? The enemy is after your soul. That is where everything that ever happens in your life lives. You are a spiritual being that lives in a body and possess a soul. The soul dictates what the spirit receives. The spirit tries to manage what happens in the body. And there is a battle, there is a war, guys, that's going on between the flesh and the spirit, the spirit and the soul. It's a constant battle. This is what the Word of God says, For the desire of the flesh is against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, for these are in opposition to one another in order to keep you from doing whatever you want. That's where the battle is. The fight is against your spirit and against your flesh. 
Behold, I urge you as foreigners and strangers to abstain from fleshly lust, which rage war against the soul. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. What leads to the unending quarrels and conflict among you? Do they not come from your desires that rage war in your bodily members fighting for control over you? James 4 and verse 1. Guys, you can be a believer in Christ Jesus and your soul is not renewed. Your soul is not delivered. You can struggle with lying, stealing, sexual perversion, pornography, drugs, addiction, and all other things, even though you are a Christian, because of the problem in the soul. The problem is not in your flesh. We don't have a flesh problem. We have a soul problem. Your addiction is not a feeling problem. It is a soul problem. So then the question is, what is your soul? Your soul is the mind, the will, and the emotion. Your soul receive from your senses and deposit it to your body. This is where everything about you take place. Every action that you've ever done, it came through these three entities, your mind, your will, and your emotions. How does the soul get programmed? The soul is programmed through our senses, through our hearing, feeling, tasting, and smelling. These are the areas that programs the soul. These are what I called input devices. Our mind receives information from these portals. See, we have an active mind. Our active mind receives information. It gives it to our subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind holds that information and give it to our soul. Our subconscious never sleeps. It keeps playing back everything that ever happens to you, whether it's a year ago, whether it's three years ago, whether it was five years ago, or it just happened right now. Have you ever listened to a song during the day and you go to bed that night and you kind of hear that song playing in your mind? You're singing that song. You're not singing it out loud, but you're singing that song. You're playing that song in your mind. That was your subconscious mind at work. It never sleeps. It remembers everything. Remember that your soul is programmed through your mind, your will, and your emotion. What I decided to do in this part of the video is to do a PowerPoint slide to really explain to you how soul ties are really developed. I want to use an analogy to, so that you can understand how it really works, right? And I'm going to use a computer to really do that. Now, in the IT industry, right, they have a saying, giggle, garbage in, garbage out, giggle, garbage in, garbage out. You can only get from your computer what is stored on the hard drive. So in other words, the quality of information coming out cannot be better than the quality of the information that is going in. And so you cannot get out of the computer that which you did not put into it. You cannot get out of your mind. You cannot get out of yourself. You cannot get out of your subconscious that which uh, uh, you have not put into it. And so the computer only read and take the information that is already there. And, and, and the computer also have the input and output devices, right? The, the computer do have both, input and output, right? The input device is what collects the data for the computer. The output device display what is on the computer, right? And then we also have the hard drive, which is the brain of the computer. Everything that you read, everything that you watch, everything that you um, look at, it has a storage place. It had somewhere that it stores the information. This is the brain. This is the subconscious. This is the soul of the computer. Everything sits here. If you want to get a Word document, you have to go to the hard drive. You ask the hard drive to pull up the Word document. The Word document go to Microsoft Word, which is an application to run that, that, that program. And so the same thing goes with 
a song, the same thing goes with anything that you ask for. It has to get that information, retrieve it from somewhere, and send it to the place that it needs to operate, needs to run. And, and so the, the, the hard drive is like the brain of the computer. It stores all the information, right? And then you have what we call the input device on the computer. What is the input device? The input device is the keyboard, the mouse, the scanner, the trackball, the joystick, you know, the touch screen, the um, card readers, and all these different things are what we call the input device, right? You, you have the flash drive, you know, the USB drive, you have the optical drive, but again, guys, these are these are what we call the input device. And then you have the output device. What are the output device? The output devices are the monitor, the, the, the printer, the speaker, the headphones, the projector. These are displays. It displays the information that you ask for. You ask for a video. It has to play somewhere. The display is there. The printer, you want to print something that's an output device. You print it on the printer. You, you listen to a song. You need a speaker in order to hear the song, right? You have the headset, same thing as the speaker. You have the projector where you can set up your monitor to become a projector. You have video cams and all these different things that you use as an output device that read what is on the hard drive. It, it's, it's important for us to know that, right? The computer plays a song, it plays a video. Everything that you need and ask for, you get it from the computer, right? And then here's the other thing about it, guys. The computer does not know right from wrong. I want you to hear me. The computer does not differentiate what is right or what is wrong. All it does is give you what you ask for based on what is stored on the hard drive. If you ask for a file that is not on the computer, you're not going to get it because it's not there. It won't give it to you. It's basically saying, what are you asking me for? Uh, I don't have any file on that information. You've given me a command that I cannot respond to. So guys, I want you to understand how important this is as it relates to soul tie, relates to information that you need, that you use every single day, right? Your, your mind operates the same way. The same thing happened to your mind, your will, and your emotion. Your mind does not know what is right or what is wrong. It only receives the information that you gives it. It takes that information, give it to your subconscious, your subconscious receive that information, hand it to your soul, your soul process that creates a habit, and then your body is responding to that which is inside of you. You know, Ralph Emerson uh, um, have a quote that you sow a thought, you reap an action. You sow an action, you reap a habit. You sow a habit, you reap a character, and that character becomes your destiny. And so, guys, your mind only responds to what it it knows what you give it. That's exactly how it, it operates. And that's why it's important for you to remember that your soul is programmed through your senses. What you see, right? Your sight, what you're looking at. You know, you're looking at pornography. You're looking at, uh, um, you know, sexual videos and, 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 and movies and, and pictures and all those different things. It helps to program your soul, your mind, right? Your, your, what you smell. Like it or not, good smell and bad smell. Women, men have smell. Hey, it is what it is. Let's just be real about it. Touch the way somebody touches your body, the way somebody touch you. It, 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 it's received. Your mind receive that. Your will and your emotion receive that. And then it is stored into your mind. Your mind give that back to your subconscious. And your subconscious take that and now hand it to your body. And now your body is responding to that which is inside of you. Taste is the same thing. The food that you taste. Hello, hearing what you hear, what they're saying to you, what they're whispering in your ears. All these things are what we use to determine how we respond to information. And that information creates a habit. That habit becomes a character. And that character is what lives inside of our soul. And our soul always draws from that to determine exactly what you do. 
And so it's critical for us to understand and get a hold of that information. So your mind receive the information, give it to your subconscious, your, your well and your subconscious hand it to your soul. Your soul take this information, hand it to your spirit, and your spirit now battle between what you need to do and what you shouldn't do. It is important that you know what your soul is doing. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to what I'm telling you. You need to know what your soul is doing. Jesus tells us to take heed for what we hear and what we do. In other words, you have to relegate and delegate and monitor what goes on in your mind. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your, 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 your mind is your heart. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. That's where the battleground is. That's where the seed of every thoughts and every actions and everything that you do, it first was planted in your mind. And so, guys, I wanted to just use this part of the video uh, um, to do a demonstration to show you how important it is to understand how the mind, your will, your emotion, your subconscious, and your soul interwoven and connected together to create the habits that you are using to feed your soul right now. It is a part of who you are. You cannot, you cannot separate the habit from the man or the man from the habit. You are what you think and you are what you do. All right, guys? And so that's what I wanted to share with you in this section of the video. Your actions and relationship creates soul ties. Every relationship that you've had creates a connection with that person. Now, some connections are stronger than the other because of soul ties. You know, some are easier to get rid of. Others are very difficult. It depending on how much time is spent with the person. And that determine how much soul you have developed for that individual. When a man and a woman have sexual intercourse, they are bonding not just on a physical level, but they're also bonding and they're coming together on a soul level. This is because of how the mind, the will, and the emotion works. See, when a man touches your body, it is receiving that touch in these three areas, your mind, your will, and your emotion. When a man tell you that, girl, you are beautiful, you are fine, you are sexy, I love you, I can't wait to marry you, I can't wait to have sex with you, you are gorgeous, you're good looking, I can't get you out of my mind. Guess what? You are developing soul connection. You keep remembering what they told you. When a woman tell a man how sexy he is, how good looking he is, and he wait to touch those muscles and have those arms wrap around her, what do you think is happening to you? All these emotions, all these memories, all these are stimuli, all these are embedded in your mind and your subconscious and in your soul. The same thing happened in your childhood. Emotional abuse, sexual molestation, sexual abuse, trauma, pain from the past, issues that happened to you years ago. You see that person and you get angry like it happens yesterday. You watch a movie that reminded you of something that somebody did to you and it, it gets you angry all over again. Those emotions lives in your soul. Your senses feed your soul. Your soul feed your spirit and your spirit deposit that which is inside of you to your body. So there is a battle going on between your spirit and your soul. There, there is a war going on. There is a fight going on. There is a struggle going on. You're trying to forget about that man, but every time that you hear the song that he played when he made love to you, it brings you right back to where you got started because it is in your soul. You want to leave that relationship, but your soul won't let you go. The spirit in you is telling you that you have to go. You have to let that man go. You, you have to walk away. But your mind and your will and your emotion is fighting against your spirit. The spirit is telling your body to stop sleeping with that married man. 
that you have no business being with a married man. There is no future with a married man. You got to leave that woman alone. They are dragging you down rather than build you up. Stop having sex out of marriage. Leave that joker alone. But your soul is saying, my God, the sex is so good. I can't get rid of him. Yes, you can. And your spirit is wrestling with you. You want to do good, but you're wrestling in your body. You're wrestling in your spirit because you know what you're doing is wrong. But your flesh, your soul just won't let you go. It's pulling you away from stopping and doing what God wants you to do. You want to stop watching pornography, but there is a pattern in your soul. There is a surge map in your brain that creates a pattern that your soul and your body love to follow. You made a great attempt, and for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, you're okay. And then sooner or later, there goes that program again, coming right back at you, hitting you. And by the time you look, and by the time you realize what is happening, you're right back down that rabbit trail doing the same thing that you promised yourself, that I will never do that again. Oh, it's not, a, it's not a physical thing, my friend. It is a soul problem. I'm telling you, that is in your subconscious. It's in your mind. It is in your emotion. It is in your will. That's where the struggle is. Whew. Some of you guys met the right woman. You met the right one this time. You met the right guy. And all you do is to make comparison and contrast between your ex and who you're with right now. Why? Because the sequence of operation in your mind, your will, and your emotion has not changed. You are saved, but your soul is not delivered. And this is why we must walk in the spirit daily. It is a daily battle between the flesh and the spirit. You have to give it to God. You have to let go of those struggles that keep holding you back. Listen, I know it's not easy. We all have our struggles. We all go through our challenges, but we have got to know that we have the power over our body. That's what the Bible tells us to walk in the spirit and we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We have to die to our flesh daily. God can help us to break soul ties along with other intervention and all the things that we can do in order for us to safeguard and protect ourselves, protect our integrity, protect our relationships, protect our marriage, protect our faith in God from this vicious cycle of allowing our flesh and our emotion and our will to have more power and control over us. That's why the Bible tells us, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It is a mind thing. As a man think it in his heart, this is your heart. This is just a vessel that pumps blood. But your mind is where everything is, the heart. And so guys, this is what I wanted to share with you in this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you get anything out of this video, then hit that like button. Please leave a comment in the comment section. Let us continue the discussion over there. If you have not subscribed to this channel, then the question is, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. May God continue to bless you. May God keep you. Keep the faith. Trust in God. Believe in yourself. Believe that you have power over the flesh. God has given us authority over the flesh. That's why we live by the Spirit and not by the flesh. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. May God continue to bless you. And I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Be blessed. See you later.